Having depression is just so fucking hard. First of all, you have no hope. You have despair, no appetite, no energy. So you stop taking care of yourself and you constantly have to put on a face so other people don't worry about you. You're hung up on the past, you're sad, unmotivated. You have no interest in any of the stuff you liked before. You might have reoccurring thoughts of suicide. It's so hard to focus, it's so hard to sleep, and maybe you can't stop thinking about the person who used you like a free trial and then dipped, only reinforcing your set-in-stone belief that nothing ever works out. I feel like it helps to focus on one task at a time, and if it's a huge project, I like to break it down into smaller chunks so I'm not so overwhelmed by everything. If your professor or teacher needs you to read the textbook and you just don't have the time to just sit there and read it, I love using this app called Vio because then you can just do other shit while it just reads it to you. To assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. Amendment Having your room nice and organized just helps you kind of have a more clear mind. I like trying to do the harder stuff earlier in the day and then the easier stuff at the end of the day. It also helps if you tell yourself, okay, I'm going to be done by 7. Then it gives you a marker of when you need to be done. It's like the theory of when you're given a huge amount of time to do a project and then you end up saving it until like the last minute. But if it's due within a week, you'll be able to get it done much sooner and you'll pace yourself relatively better. I have a problem with procrastination, as I'm sure everyone does. So right when I'm about to quit, I will force myself to do at least one more problem or question before I stop. If you're having trouble starting something, I will just set a timer for one minute doing that thing just so I can just start. I know everyone says this, but remember to go outside because nature is just so healthy for the soul. Light just helps with your serotonin. It's so easy to just be stuck inside all day, so you just have to drag yourself outside. I feel like once I complete one task, then I'm like, all right, let's keep going. It just gets the ball rolling, so you can be inspired to finish other stuff too. I know when I was in AP literature, we would do an essay every two weeks. It was insane. So that's why I love using voice to text. I'll just get out a bunch of random thoughts and ideas, and I'll just sort it up and fix it up once I have those random ideas down on the page. Then I can just force it into the structure of introduction, body, and conclusion. She deals with adversity and she's able to learn and give her self-respect. Self Lately I've been drinking mushroom coffee, which isn't as yummy as other coffees, but it helps me not crash later in the day. I've also been using this Motivate oil. I swear it literally works. I'll put some on my wrist, and then once it sinks in, it motivates you to get stuff done. So I just finished reading Slight Edge and You Are a Badass by Jen Sincero. Once you get past the pretty cringy millennial writing in Jen's book, you'll learn that it is incredible. It is literally one of the best books I've ever read. She says, when we're in fear, we hold on to what we've got because we don't trust that there's more. And I can totally relate to this. When anything good happens in my life that brings me joy, I will hold on to it. I'll hold on to it so hard. And when I lose it, it's like, it feels like the world is over for me. Because I've invested so much of my hopes and dreams into this one thing. You don't have to hold on so, so tightly. We've got to trust that there's more good in the world. She also says, people who are successful are not only willing to get uncomfortable, but they know they have to make a habit of it if they want to stay successful. This really pushes me to just force myself out of my comfort zone. I watched this incredible TED talk on rejection, and his theory is that the more times you get rejected, the less sensitive you are to it. So what I did was, for a few months, when I would be on my walks and I would see strangers pass by, I would wave and I would say hi. And some people would be nice, some people would say hi back or wave, some people would not see me or hear me, some people, I don't know, maybe they even ignored me. But there was this one interaction where I was passing by and I waved at someone and I said hi, 
and they literally just looked me up and down, they glared at me and kept walking. And I could let that crush me. I could look at myself and think, what is wrong with me? Like, why is this person judging me so hard? Like, there must be something wrong with me. But since I had been so desensitized to rejection, I was literally so happy that happened. I was like, yes! Oh my god, I feel like nothing can touch me now. I've built such a thick skin that like nothing anyone does or says can really affect me. I feel like it's only my own opinion that matters. I've seen so many people in my life just let fear completely control their life. And including me, a lot of the times fear will just control my life. But the first thing we have to do is notice it. Fear is controlling my life and then we can change it. And I get why people stay in their fear. It is such a strong, intense feeling that just keeps you inside your circle. But once we break out of that circle of fear, we realize that there is no reason to be fearful. There's nothing quite like fear to hold you back. Because we can get comfortable in our fear. Because our fear can protect us. But it's actually in the way of us moving forward. In the book The Slight Edge, my favorite quote is, you need to counteract the force of gravity, or to put a different name to it, the force of mediocrity. And this gets at me, this really just pushes me to get off my ass, even when I'm feeling so depressed, so hopeless, with so little energy, I just force myself up off my bed. Once I do, I will work so hard, Sometimes I feel like I work too much, but I'd rather work too much than let my life pass me by. And I definitely don't condone hustle culture. I think hustle culture is so toxic. I remember Will Smith saying something like, when the other guy is sleeping, I'm working. When the other guy is eating, I'm working. There's no reason for that. Seriously, sleeping and eating are human necessities. That is non-negotiable. If you're thinking like that, you are going to crash so, so hard into the ground. You need to have a balance. It can't be all work, it can't be just sitting around all the time. You gotta find the balance, which I'm still working on. It's funny how the library has changed my life so much. It's literally free. These books have been sitting next to my bed for like at least six months to a year. It is just so hard to get yourself to read. That's because being on my phone so much, I'm so used to instant gratification. So it's so hard to just turn my phone off and pull out a book and help out my attention span by not just consuming all the time constantly. That's why it took so, so long to actually read these books finally. And I'm so glad I did. For me personally, I feel like reading at night is best. It helps calm you down and get ready for bed. It's crazy how books can literally change your mind. They change how you see the world and they change what you believe is possible for yourself. I think fun is also so essential because sometimes we'll get all this work done but we still have that nagging feeling to do more work. So we just have to force ourselves outside and to go do something fun. I love going to Alki Beach and roller skating because it not only is very fun, I'm also working on my form, I'm working on skating and balance. There's an aspect of learning and growing, and I'm also having fun and being outside. Another thing that helps me is if I have something really exciting coming up, I'll make a little to-do list. And I'll have it so that I want to get these stuff done before that happens, so that when that exciting thing happens, it's going to be twice as exciting because I have all this stuff done. And I like to keep it relatively easy, not too overwhelming, otherwise I'll do none of it. And if you want structure, I recommend making a schedule for yourself because there will be some days where I'm just like, oh my god, what do I do? I don't know what the fuck to do. Can someone just tell me what to do? It helps you to just always be busy, always having something to do, not focusing too hard on your thoughts. I really hope some of these tips will make life less hard for you because I'm right there with you. I am so depressed. There are some days where you're climbing the hill and then the hill just keeps getting steeper and steeper and it feels like, what's the point? Like, why do I keep walking up a hill that keeps getting steeper? Sometimes it feels like the world isn't built for you to succeed. And I'm fighting that every day. 